Hello my friends, and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. The construction of the Pioneering Spirit, the world's largest heavy lift construction vessel at the time of its delivery, is a testament to human engineering prowess and the relentless pursuit of innovation in the maritime industry. This colossal vessel, owned by the Alsis Group, a Switzerland-based offshore pipe-laying contractor, was designed to perform single-lift installations and decommissions of large oil and gas platforms, as well as the installation of subsea oil and gas pipelines. The construction journey of the pioneering spirit began with the assembly of its portside hull in dry dock number three. This massive structure, once completed, would form one half of the vessel's unique catamaran hull design. Concurrently, the starboard hull was being assembled in dry dock number four. The meticulous planning and precision required for these assemblies ensured that the two halves would fit seamlessly when time came for their union. Once the starboard hull was ready, it was floated out from dry dock number four and moved to the H key. This was a significant milestone, marking the completion of one half of the vessel. Shortly after, the port side hull was floated out from dry dock number five and positioned at the F key. With both halves now out in the open, the next monumental task was their joining. This process was a marvel of engineering, requiring precise alignment and secure fastening. Following the successful joining of the two half hulls, the pioneering spirit was moved from the H key to dry dock number one. This transit was crucial for the final stages of construction and outfitting. After the necessary work was completed in dry dock number one, the vessel made its way to the D key, marking one of its final stops before its departure from the Daewoo shipyard. The pioneering spirit's journey did not end there. In January 2015, the vessel made its grand arrival in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. This marked a significant phase in its construction journey, as it was here that the final assembly took place in Alexahaven. The vessel's top sides lift system beams were installed, enhancing its capability to lift massive structures weighing up to 48,000 tons. The pioneering spirit's design and features are noteworthy. Delta Marin was responsible for the detailed design, which included naval architecture, structural and system engineering, and accommodation. The vessel's catamaran hull design integrates a dynamic positioning system and a motion compensation system. Its forward hull features a slot used for lifting topsides. The vessel boasts an impressive length of 382 meters, breadth of 124 meters, and depth of 30 m. It can accommodate up to 571 personnel in two berth cabins. On the 21st of April, All Seas Pioneering Spirit marked a significant achievement by successfully deploying its groundbreaking jacket lift system, JLS, to remove CNR International's Ninian Northern Jacket from the Northern North Sea. This 8,100-ton lift, the first commercial operation using the JLS technology, 
stands as one of the heaviest offshore jacket lifts in history, yet it's just a fraction of the system's impressive 20,000-ton single lift capacity. The pioneering spirit, recognized as the world's largest and most adaptable offshore construction vessel, subsequently transported the jacket to the deep water port of Lerwick in the Shetland Islands. There, the jacket will be handed over, fully intact, to the Veolia Peterson Yard, which boasts a remarkable target of 98% steel reuse. Edward Hirama, Alsi's president, highlighted CNR International's choice of pioneering spirit for this task as a testament to the industry's trust in Alsi's forward-thinking engineering solutions. This move further solidifies Alsi's standing as a leader in the global offshore energy sector. The vessel reached the Ninian Field, located 160 kilometers northeast of the Shetland Islands on the 14th of April. Following meticulous preparations, which included cutting through the jacket's eight legs, the JLS was activated to safely hoist the jacket from the water. The jacket was then aligned with the beams and placed onto the main aft deck, ready for its journey to the Shetlands. This operation culminates two years of intensive planning and design, following the pioneering spirit's successful removal of the 14,200T Ninian northern platform topsides in 2020. The pioneering spirit's technology is a departure from traditional crane lifting vessels. Its aft-mounted system, consisting of two interconnected 170-meter-long beams, can lift and support jackets of varying sizes, this innovation not only ensures the structural integrity of the jackets, but also facilitates their direct transfer to and from the quayside, eliminating the need for support barges and reducing emissions. The detailed removal process of the Brent Delta topsides, a massive structure weighing a staggering 24,000 tons, positioning the first starboard yoke, the operation commenced with the careful positioning of the first starboard yoke beneath the platform. This step was crucial as it set the tone for the subsequent stages, ensuring that the platform's weight would be evenly distributed during the lifting process, engaging the active motion compensation system. With the yoke in place, the active motion compensation system was activated. This state-of-the-art system ensured that the vessel remained stable, compensating for the sea's movements and providing a steady base for the upcoming lift. Connecting the yoke, precision was key. With the system ensuring stability, the yoke was meticulously connected to the platform, ensuring a firm grip. Positioning the port side yokes, the operation symmetry was maintained by positioning the first two port side yokes beneath the platform. Engaging the system again, the active motion compensation system was re-engaged, preparing for the next set of yokes to be connected. Connecting the yokes, one by one the yokes were connected to the platform. The second and third starboard yokes, the third and fourth portside yokes, and finally the fourth starboard yoke were all methodically connected. accumulating upward pressure. With all yokes securely in place, the next phase began. Upward pressure was accumulated through a process called deballasting. This involved removing ballast water from the vessel, 
allowing it to rise and exert upward force on the platform. Fast lift of the topsides, the culmination of years of planning was realized in a mere 10 seconds, the pioneering spirit showcasing its engineering prowess executed the heaviest marine lift ever undertaken at sea, elevating the 24,200-ton platform from its resting place at Brent Delta. Navigating away, with the platform securely in its grasp, the pioneering spirit gracefully moved away from the platform's legs, ensuring no residual damage. Turning the vessel. A crucial step involved turning the vessel to facilitate the installation of leg covers. This ensured that the platform's legs were protected during transit. Journey to Hartley Pool. The pioneering spirit then embarked on its voyage to the dismantling yard in Hartley Pool, England, this journey was not just a physical transit, but also symbolized the transition of the platform from an operational phase to decommissioning. Arrival of Iron Lady As the pioneering spirit approached its destination, the cargo barge, Iron Lady, was prepped and ready. This barge was tasked with the final leg of the journey, transporting the topsides to their final resting place. transferring the topsides, in a synchronized ballet of engineering, the Iron Lady was moved into the slot of the pioneering spirit. The topsides were then transferred, marking it another successful phase of the operation. Disconnecting the yokes. With the topsides securely on the Iron Lady, the yokes were disconnected, allowing the pioneering spirit to retreat and prepare for its next mission. final journey to the dismantling yard. The Iron Lady, bearing the weight of the topsides, embarked on its final journey to the dismantling yard. This marked the end of the topsides' operational life and the beginning of its decommissioning phase. Load-in of the topsides, the last step in this monumental operation was the load-in of the topsides at the dismantling yard. This process involved placing the topsides in a designated area, ready for dismantling and recycling. The Offshore Pipeline and Mooring Tower Project by PT Rekayasa Industry in East Java, Indonesia, awarded by ExxonMobil. The core components of this project encompassed a 20-inch diameter offshore pipeline stretching over a remarkable length of 23 kilometers, alongside the creation of a mooring tower weighing a total of 5,000 tons. The mooring tower, a colossal structure with an impressive height of 84 meters from the seabed, was strategically installed in the Tuban offshore area.
The mooring tower project consisted of four crucial modules, the pile and jacket, the topside, and three yokes for the mooring support structure, MSS. Each of these modules played a pivotal role in ensuring the stability and functionality of the mooring tower. The project's journey commenced with project initiation and the formulation of a comprehensive project execution plan, which laid the groundwork for the subsequent phases. The engineering phase saw PT, Rekiasa Industries engineers collaborate with technology providers in Houston, United States, to create an optimal design. The construction phase began at the fabrication yard where skilled domestic workers meticulously brought the mooring tower's components to life. The mooring tower was constructed in four parts, and every aspect of the construction process was executed with precision and care, ensuring the highest quality standards were met. Upon completion of the fabrication at the yard, the modules were transported to the Tubin offshore site. This was a complex logistical operation, carefully planned to account for factors like weather conditions and wave heights, as well as stability analysis. The meticulous planning ensured that the modules were safely transported and ready for installation. installation at the offshore site was a sophisticated process, beginning with an underwater survey using remotely operated vehicles, ROV, to assess seabed conditions. The jacket structure, designed with four main columns and eight skirt piles, weighing up to an astonishing 1,240 tons, was skillfully installed using a 3,000-ton derrick barge. The installation continued with the penetration of eight piles into the seabed, reaching depths of up to 55 meters. Hydraulic hammers with a capacity of 800 tons were employed for this purpose. Regular leveling surveys were conducted throughout the piling process to ensure the structure remained level and stable. The subsea spool installation involved meticulous subsea metrology and precise installation of the spool, ensuring a seamless connection between the subsea pipeline and the riser pipe. The topside module, weighing up to 1,000 tons and serving as the upper structure of the tower, was then connected to the piping system on the jacket. The mooring tower's final components, the yokum and jumper hose, along with the bridle cable, were meticulously installed to facilitate the transfer of products, utilities, and electrical and control systems between the mooring tower and the FSO. Positioning the FSO in close proximity to the mooring tower involved the coordinated efforts of tugboats and mooring lines, ensuring an optimal position for the mechanical system connection.
The installation of an offshore platform is a complex and meticulously orchestrated operation that involves various stages and components. This process requires the collaboration of a skilled team, specialized equipment, and precise planning. In this part, we will delve into the step-by-step -step installation process of an offshore platform. The material barge before the actual platform installation can commence, the required materials and equipment must be transported to the offshore site. A material barge, often laden with the platform components, is used for this purpose. This barge serves as the staging area for storing and assembling the components before they are deployed underwater. The jacket The jacket is a critical component of an offshore platform. It is a massive steel structure resembling a skeletal frame that provides the necessary stability and support for the platform. The jacket's design takes into consideration the water depth, seabed conditions, and environmental loads. Fabricating the jacket typically occurs onshore at a construction yard. Jacket lift, once the jacket is ready, it must be lifted from the material barge and transported to the installation site. This operation requires specialized lifting equipment, such as a heavy lift crane vessel. The jacket is carefully positioned over the designated installation location on the seabed. Jacket upending after the jacket is in position, it must be upended to its vertical orientation from its horizontal position during transportation. This process, known as upending, is crucial for ensuring the jacket's stability on the seabed. Powerful winches are used to accomplish this task, often requiring precise coordination among the installation crew. The piles to anchor the platform securely to the seabed, a series of steel piles, also known as legs or conductors, are driven into the sediment. These piles are designed to withstand the forces of ocean currents, waves, and lateral loads. The pile length and diameter are determined by factors such as water depth and soil composition. Welding the piles before the piles are driven into the seabed, they must be welded to the jacket's leg sleeves. This welding process ensures a strong and secure connection between the piles and the jacket, effectively transferring the platform's load to the seabed. Hammering the piles with the piles securely welded to the jacket, the installation team uses hydraulic hammers or vibratory drivers to drive the piles into the seabed. This is a carefully monitored process, as excessive force or deviation from the planned pile orientation can lead to instability. Pile cutoffs after the piles are driven to the desired depth, excess length is cut off to achieve the correct elevation. This ensures that the platform is positioned at the appropriate height above the seabed to accommodate changing sea levels and maintain stability.
The crown shims are precision-engineered components that are placed on top of the piles. These shims are vital for ensuring that the top sides, the upper portion of the platform, aligns perfectly with the jacket. They provide a level and stable surface for the subsequent installation steps. The boat landing is an essential part of the platform installation, as it provides a secure and accessible point for crew transfer and supply deliveries. This feature is carefully positioned on the platform, often near the helideck, to facilitate safe and efficient operations. The top sides are the above water portion of the offshore platform and house all the necessary facilities and equipment for oil and gas production or other industrial activities. These structures are typically modular and fabricated onshore before being transported to the installation site. Completions after the top sides are successfully positioned on the jacket, the process of completions begins. This phase involves connecting all the internal systems, electrical components, piping, and instrumentation required for the platform to function. It is a meticulous process that ensures the platform is fully operational. The final inspection before the offshore platform can be considered fully operational, a comprehensive final inspection is conducted. This inspection covers all aspects of the platform's structural integrity, safety systems, and operational readiness. Any necessary adjustments or corrections are made to ensure the platform meets all regulatory requirements and industry standards. The Appomattox oil platform is an engineering marvel designed to withstand the harshest conditions in the Gulf of Mexico for an impressive lifespan of 40 years. Towering at 16 stories in height, this colossal structure is often likened to a skyscraper in the sea and ranks among the world's largest oil platforms. In Jioye, South Korea, thousands of workers converged at one of the world's largest shipyards to bring the Appomattox to life. Over the course of several years, enormous modules were painstakingly constructed on the key side and then expertly stacked atop one another using massive cranes akin to assembling a giant 3D puzzle. One of the most remarkable aspects of the Appomattox platform is its extended lifespan of 40 years, double that of most platforms. Situated 80 miles off the Louisiana coast, in waters 1.5 miles deep with an oil reservoir buried another 14,000 feet below the seabed, this platform would face extreme conditions to ensure its longevity. The engineers opted for a fully electric power plant, drawing inspiration from Tesla's electric cars, significantly reducing emissions.
Another ecological challenge was sourcing water for cooling systems. Researchers discovered that by tapping into water from depths of 2,000 feet, they could reduce consumption and minimize the impact on marine life. In a remarkable twist, the swimming speed of small fish, like the elusive Phrenema, played a pivotal role in determining the water intake strategy. The Appomattox Platform's innovative insulation system, initially developed for bulletproof vests, was another breakthrough. It proved capable of withstanding extreme conditions at depths of 7,000 feet under the sea for four decades. In addition, chemical storage tanks were designed to be fully extractable, allowing for easy replacement if damaged by corrosive chemicals over time. Each of these solutions marked a significant achievement in engineering and sustainability. The construction of Appomattox was a monumental effort, involving the creation and assembly of massive modules, each weighing around 10,000 tons. These modules encompassed power generation, oil and gas processing, utilities, and living quarters. The delicate lifts and placements of these modules onto the hull marked pivotal moments in the platform's construction. The journey of the amazing Appomattox oil platform is one marked by challenges and daring decisions, from its construction site in Gioia, South Korea, to its final destination in the Gulf of Mexico, this massive oil platform faced numerous hurdles, including one of nature's most formidable forces, a super typhoon. As the Appomattox Hall neared completion in South Korea, an impending super typhoon named Nauru threatened to disrupt its journey. The team of engineers and workers, aware of the storm's approaching fury, intensified their efforts, adopting a round-the-clock schedule to prepare the platform for departure. With each passing hour, the storm's path became increasingly uncertain. Nauru had transformed into a super typhoon, and its trajectory now pointed towards the shipyard. The team faced a critical decision to keep the platform on land and risk damage from the storm's fury or put it in the water to outrun the impending disaster. Ultimately, they chose to move forward, making use of massive hydraulics to transfer the 41,000-ton hull onto a floating dry dock. Tugboats then towed it away from the shipyard and into the bay. It was a race against time, as they needed 36 hours to put a safe distance between the platform and the super typhoon. Costco's enormous Xin Guanghua, a semi-submersible heavy-lift vessel capable of carrying a staggering 98,000 tons, awaited in deeper waters. The Appomattox Hull, now floating freely for the first time, was tugged six and a quarter miles to meet its ocean-going transport vessel. This crucial maneuver demanded calm seas and winds below 16 knots, a challenging task with a super typhoon looming. After several attempts, they finally succeeded in positioning the hull over the transport vessel, deballasting both to lift them clear of the water. However, the battle against the elements was far from over. Strong winds threatened to derail their efforts, forcing them to halt multiple times. A stroke of luck arrived with a favorable weather forecast, presenting a two-hour window of calm. At sunrise, they executed a flawless maneuver, hoisting the Appomattox hull onto its transport vessel just in time to evade the super typhoon. The team's meticulous planning and unwavering determination paid off as they avoided the worst of Naru's wrath.
but the Appomattox still had a long journey ahead, spanning 14,500 miles through various challenging waters, including the treacherous Cape of Good Hope. As it embarked on its epic voyage from South Korea to the Gulf of Mexico, this massive oil platform had already demonstrated its resilience against nature's most formidable forces, setting the stage for a remarkable journey to its final destination. This impressive engineering and logistical undertaking unfolded as the Shenzi TLP tension leg platform hull, an immense structure weighing 11,200 tons, embarked on its voyage from Gioye, South Korea, to its final destination at Kiwit Offshore Services in Ingleside, Texas, USA. This monumental task was made possible through the innovative efforts of Dockwise engineers and the expertise of the heavy transport vessel, Mighty Servant One. The Shenzi TLP hull, boasting a towering height of 70 meters and a remarkable span of 85 meters, reaching 111 meters diagonally, posed substantial challenges in terms of its size and weight. To ensure a seamless transition from the construction site in Gioye to its designated location in the Gulf of Mexico, Dockwise engineers devised an ingenious plan to streamline the process saving valuable time and reducing the required handling for this colossal cargo. The loading procedure commenced when the mighty Servant One arrived in Gioye, where extensive preparations were carried out on the vessel's deck. Subsequently, on a chosen date, the Shenzi TLP hull was expertly skidded from Samsung's building key onto a specially designed skidding arrangement on the aft deck of the Mighty Servant One. Following the successful completion of the skidding operation and the secure attachment of temporary sea fastenings, the mighty Servant One was relocated to an anchorage just outside GOEA Harbor. The water depth at this location averaged around 25 meters, providing the ideal conditions for the next crucial phase of the operation. On a designated day, the Mighty Servant One submerged itself to attain a specific draft with approximately 21 meters forward and 23 meters aft. This allowed for the careful float on of the Shenzi TLP hull onto the vessel's deck. This submersion process was executed with precision, taking into account the unique shape of the hull, which featured a significant dead rise and rake. Achieving the desired stability required meticulous maneuvering, with the vessel adopting a measured trim by the stern and a slight heel-first approach. Once the Shenzi TLP hull had been skillfully positioned over the wooden cribbing using tugger lines, the mighty Servant One resurfaced gradually returning to a sailing draft of approximately 8 meters. The Shenzi TLP hull now securely rested on the strategically placed cribbing arrangement that had been installed in front of the skidding setup. With temporary sea fastenings in place, the mighty Servant One proceeded to return to the Samsung quayside. Here, the remaining sea fastenings were painstakingly installed, and the skidding arrangement was carefully removed marking the final preparations for the extensive voyage across the seas to Ingleside, USA.